Brooklyn Dodger baseball, brought to you by the makers of Lucky Strike, the cigarette that's made better to taste better. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. The makers of Camel Cigarettes bring the world's latest news events right into your own living room. Sit back, light up a camel, and be an eyewitness to the happenings that made history in the last 24 hours. The Camel News Caravan presents... Today's news today. The cigarette people spent a tremendous amount of money on television. Uh, the shows were sold directly to the advertiser. The advertiser paid for them. And the advertiser decided where to put them. What network, what time periods. Chesterfield brings you the Perry Como Show. All the top tunes on TV. <laughs> Chesterfield is best for you, much milder, better tasting too. There, today's best cigarette buy. Come on, smokers, why don't you try? Chesterfield, best for you. Chesterfield, best for you. King size, regular, either way. Make it Chesterfields today. Advertisers controlled literally all of the daytime programming, and the primetime programs were all controlled by advertisers. The cigarette companies. Uh, had uh, a great deal of clout with the networks and were able to place their programs uh, basically where they wanted them. Uh, that Philip Morris, for example, was a company that had a great deal of clout with CBS. Philip Morris, America's most enjoyable cigarette, presents the Lucille Ball Desi Arnaz Show, I Love Lucy. Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz would become million-dollar stars, but the product they sold would be a billion-dollar business. From the show open to the final fade, selling was what it was all about. Why Lucy and Desi wouldn't even go to their separate beds without one last puff. How about a good night cigarette, Ricky? Thank you, Lucy. Mmm, nothing but the best, huh? Next, nothing but Philip Morris. The cigarette companies control the show. Their agencies usually owned the show, uh, they um, made all of the content decisions, and the only negotiations that we had with our clients was uh, price and time period. If there was a price to pay for success, no one was adding it up yet. For the time being, the price was right. Uh, in case you don't know from what we've uh, already shown you back there, it's a little thing we do called Price is Right. Another thing, thanks to all of you in the advertising end of the Newport uh, organization for helping us with our messages. They're good, straightforward, conversational pieces. I mean, there are not a lot of things to point to and juggle and run around the stage. We just get a chance to stand up and talk and tell everyone how we like Newport with a hint of mint. Oh, Certainly, if advertising agencies and the cigarette companies they represented controlled the programs, it was only natural that they were on the set welcomed or not. Most of us were sort of what we used to call agency finks, and, and we were sort of negative factors, in my opinion. Now that I've, you know, now that I've been on the, on the production side since, I, I don't think the agency guys contributed a lot. The $64,000 challenge. And now, the star of our show, where challenger meets champion, with $64,000 at stake, Sonny Fox. It was live, Tuesday night, people going for $64,000. The sponsors came, the network came, uh, everybody was in the client booth and in the audience. And they, were, they always assigned somebody from an agency to come and make sure that the signs, there was a, there was a, a Kent package, cigarettes sticking out of it, and on, one, so on one booth, and there was a Kent sign on the other side of the stage. And in the middle, there was this big Kent sign that read out Kent. And, and uh, uh, this one executive came, he's an executive, they were all vice presidents uh, uh, in charge of, you know, making sure the Kent sign was up. And one thing he didn't know is in New York City, you don't mess with the prop men, the, the, the grips, the, the guys backstage. Well, he, he had them for an hour setting the Kent sign, more this way, more that way. And they were really ticked, you could see they were mad about 30 seconds before the show. Remember, it's a live show. 
30 seconds before that show, the Kent sign mysteriously fell down to the ground. And this guy went bananas. <laughs> I mean, running up. <laughs> Put the sign back up. We're going. It's live. <laughs> and they did that show without the Kent sign for the very first time. We never saw him again. <laughs> he was out. The second half of the Gary Moore Show is brought to you by Winston. If you bought a show, or even half of the show, frequently the talent or some part of the show would be devoted to the product so that there was a very direct association. I mean, obviously, if, if somebody has a lot of acceptance or credibility in, in the home, uh, getting that somebody to sell your product uh, works. Great show, Rocky. You really were the best man tonight. In that case, how about a bonus? Like? Like a carton of Kent's. Oh, I'll top you, Rocky. Here are two cartons. One for you, and the other... I know, to give to a friend who smokes another brand. So he can see how his taste buds grow clear and alive with Kent. Acting or selling, you are the best man. And I've got the best cigarette to help me. You know, the life of the bounty hunter was pretty rough. He lived hard, and he moved fast. Oh, thanks, Ray. But when I'm off stage, I like to stop and think, figure things out. That's why I smoke Viceroy's. And when you think your way through all the filter claims, you come to the cigarette with a thinking man's filter and a smoking man's taste. Viceroy. Well, you seem happy today. Well, why shouldn't I be? I have the two things that would make any man happy. A gorgeous wife, and I'm smoking a kid. Which do you like the best? Now, there's a tough one. <laughs> you see. For cooking and for dancing and kissing, you satisfy best. <laughs> but for filter and taste, Kent satisfies best. I'll accept that. <laughs> yeah, who is it? It's Maurice. Can I talk to you, Phil? That's Maurice Gosfield. You know the fellow who plays Dobman in the show? He's got nothing to talk to me about. But the tip is out that I just got a cop in Camels. Watch this. Watch how he tries to wheedle a pack out of me. Come on in, Maurice. Hiya, Phil. Hello, Maurice. Say, Phil, what time is rehearsal tomorrow? What time? Same time as it's been all year. Oh, really? Oh, look, look the cotton the camel. camel. Yeah. Come on, get out of here. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. Can't blame him, though. He wants his pleasure. So do I. Mm. Won't you join us? Generally, commercials were 30 seconds or a minute long. But in a live show controlled by the sponsor, who was keeping time? And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to do some advertising for my sponsor, Camel Cigarettes. I really do not have to mention Camel Cigarettes. I don't even have to mention the word Camels. I don't have to mention my sponsor. I don't have to, but the unemployment agencies are jammed. <laughs> Comedian Ed Wynn, like many others, would build entire sketches around commercials. Or, perhaps more accurately, Commercials around sketches. Okay. Yes. I'd like a package of those delicious, mild camel cigarettes. See? Yes. Yeah. Unquestionably, she's being paid by the sponsor. <laughs> yes, miss? I'd like a package of camel cigarettes, please. Camel? Yes. <laughs> Oh, there's some up there. <laughs> there you are, miss. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, um, you better make that two packages. <laughs> you mean you want another package of camels? Yes, please. <laughs> you just thought of that? You made it up yourself? Well, I just happened to be in the neighborhood, and I thought I'd drop in for a pack of camels. Camel cigarettes? Yes, you have camels. Well, I'll look. <laughs> no, 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 no. This hand? I want to pack out of this carton. <laughs> hurry it up, son. Will you hurry it up? You've been at it three days. Where's that cotton of camels? What cotton? Get another cotton of camels. Get another cotton yourself. Before it was over, Camel received more than 11 minutes of non-stop commercial time on this Edwin Show advertisement.
Cigarette endorsements, even through jokes, made the golden age of TV a very valuable time for the cigarette manufacturers. Now we're getting somewhere. A lucky strike, eh? What made you think it was a lucky strike? I ain't talking. <laughs> what made you think it was a lucky strike? Because it was so round, so fine, so fully packed, so free and easy on a draw. <laughs> Can you remember that, Wilson? Are you kidding? <laughs> How'd you know it wasn't a banana? Because they let me taste it. <laughs> it was a lucky strike, all right, because luckies taste bad. <laughs> Fresh in a fresher, smoother. Lucky strike, lucky strike. <laughs> you have to remember that, that cigarette smoking was a, an okay thing to do. Up on Broadway, there was a billboard with a hole in it that blows out smoke rings. And every month or two months, they would put a new baseball hero or movie star, whoever they paid, and he'd be on the poster with his mouth open like that. <laughs> but smoke rings would come out of it. So everybody was into, you know, smoking, and smoking was a good thing. Because nobody knew they were bad for you. Or at least the, the public didn't know. The general attitude of the American public, as, as I learned it as I grew up, was one of acceptance of tobacco cigarettes as a social norm. Almost a requirement in order to be part of an in-group. How about a Winston? Well, everybody's smoking Winston. This filter cigarette really tastes like a cigarette. Winston. Cigarette advertising was positioned to make it look like it was the right thing to do. The idea of being popular, of being desirable, of being attractive, of, of being sexy. All of these things are done by positioning a given product with a given scene. Very persuasive. Take a puff. It's springtime. Coming up next, the slogans, the spokesman, a healthy attitude, and a health scare. Could there be something unhealthy the commercials weren't telling us? When Time Machine continues here on A&E. Now I'd like to offer you a Philip Morris, sir. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you have one of your own brand handy, do you? I certainly do. Now I want you to light up one of these two cigarettes and let it come slowly through your nose. That's the way, sir. That was the Philip Morris first, is that correct? That's right. All right, let's try exactly the same thing now with your own brand of cigarette. Here's a light for you, Mr. Adams. Remember, through your nose now. All right, sir, by your own choice, now what difference did you notice between the two? As a matter of fact, quite a difference. <laughs> Cigarette advertising. From its inception, it represented TV selling at its best. Straightforward, uncomplicated, unrelenting. It took a product, told us why we wanted it, how to use it, when to try it. If not in truths, it told us in plain, simple, and memorable terms. Are you smoking more now, but enjoying it less? Light up a Kent, and you've got a good thing going. A name you can trust. A treat you can trust. It's a real tobacco taste. It's America's finest cigarette. Lucky's taste better. That's why we rest our case on your test for taste. Believe in yourself. Yes, that's what Philip Morris asked you to do. Cigarette Believe ads have always yourself. been the prime example of how you sell an undifferentiated product. That is to say, they're all alike. Cigarettes are all the same. So you had to find other things to sell. But I think the advertising was so memorable because of the slogans, the imagery. It was always first class, always very well done. I've always heard it said that tobacco marketers are about the best marketers in the world. They're almost as if they're uh, implanted in my genetic material. They came on so often and they were so well done. I mean, LS, MFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Or call for Philip Morris. Or I'd walk a mile. For a camel. There are just so many of those ads were marvelous. And a child growing up in that era uh, it just had to be tremendously influential as to how the child looked at the world in general. <laughs>